Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hi there guys, this is your friend and tutor Manas. And today in this session of engineering mechanics, we're going to talk about shear forces and bending moments. And we'll see how these two parameters help in designing a beam. But hey, what's a beam? Well, we're going to discuss that a bit later, but for now, let's kick off by understanding what shear force means. So guys, in order to clearly understand the concept of shear forces, we first need to know what exactly do we mean by a normal force. Now, if you watch carefully, here we have an object which has sort of a square cross section. Okay. Now, if we can have the axis, yeah, here it is. I'm going to be applying axial forces at both the ends. This is the starting end and this is the rear end. Okay. Now let me have the axial forces. Now, basically the axial force is such that it acts along the axis. That's it. Now, if you watch carefully, if I can make an axis over here, something like this, if you watch carefully, this axial force is making a 90 degree angle. All right. With the vertical axis of the cross section and also a 90 degree angle with the horizontal axis also. That's why since it is making a 90 degree angle and hence this name normal force. So whenever you're dealing with normal forces, you'll always see that the force is going to make a 90 degree angle at the cross section or with the cross section. Okay. So that was all about normal forces. Okay. Now what sort of a normal force is this? Now the nature of this force is such that it tries to lengthen the bar or I can also say it tries to increase the length of the bar and hence the name of the force is what you call tensile force okay the force which tries to pull the bar from both the direction or tries to increase the length of the bar is something that you generally refer to as a tensile force okay let's take a look at a different kind of a normal force here it is um, this is the object let's have the axis and now let me reverse the direction of the force okay again this is an axial force okay normal force in fact and to be very precise if you watch carefully the nature of this force is such that it tries to shorten the length of the object okay or you can also say that it tries to compress the object and therefore this sort of a force is something that we refer to as the compressive force now let's take a look at what shear force means okay here we go if you watch carefully this is the same object and the way in which we are going to be applying the force will be slightly different let me show you exactly what i'm trying to say now if you watch carefully guys here the force was making a 90 degree angle with the cross section but here this force is parallel to the cross section that is one condition parallel to cross section okay and here the force applied was perpendicular to cross section that's the first difference what is the other difference the second difference is if you watch carefully um, this is the longitudinal axis of the object and if you watch carefully the angle made between the longitudinal axis and the force over here is going to be equal to 90 degrees. So that is also one difference. Okay. That means the force that we are going to apply in case of a shear force, it's going to be equal to 90 degrees with respect to the longitudinal axis. Now one force is along the negative X direction. You can say negative X while the other force I'm going to be applying over here in the positive X direction. Now, if we just assume that the object cannot rotate, what will happen? Okay. What will happen? Just think about this. This is exactly what could happen. Yeah. This action that you saw just now is what you call shear. Okay. And the force primarily responsible for such an action is what you refer to as a shear force. Okay. So basically that's the general idea of a shear force with respect to mechanical engineering or with respect to even civil engineering. Now, let me show you a different case of a shear force. Let's have an object again and let's have the forces. Now, if you watch careful guys, um, the forces over here are acting in the positive Y and the negative y direction. Okay. So what kind of an effect or what kind of an impact are these forces going to have? Again, we are assuming that the object cannot rotate. All right. This is the effect that they're going to have. This is the shearing action that takes place and the force primarily responsible for the shearing action is what you call a shear force. That's it. So essentially this was all about shear forces from the perspective of mechanical and civil engineering. Now let's take a very general and casual look at how this shear force is affecting our day to day life. So here we go. Well, these are not just pictures, but these are real life scenarios where knowingly or unknowingly, 
we come across shear forces. Let me explain you all of this one by one. Well, let's begin by taking a look at this loaf of bread which is being sliced. The motion of this knife is downwards. You can also say that it is applying a tangential force on the cross section of this bread loaf. And when this completely passes through, we have a slice of bread. So that's one way of looking at shear force. Now let's focus on this kid brushing his teeth. The toothbrush is moving tangentially sideways, up, down. You can say that the kid is applying shear force in an attempt to remove the germs from his teeth. So that's another way of looking at shear force. In Hindus, a tilak or a tika is applied on the forehead just by sliding the ring finger from down to top right between the eyes and onto the forehead. A painter doing strokes on a canvas is also an example of shear force. Counting notes, that is sliding a note from one hand to the other, is also a result of shear force. Applying cream or lotion may be a daily routine for all of us, but even that is governed by shear forces. And finally, a device that this generation is absolutely obsessed with, a smartphone. Even here, sliding is all because of shear force applied by the finger and onto the screen.